Ride Esplanade. For many a tourist to the Isle of Wight, the first footing on island soil after the 680 metre walk or train ride down Ride Pier. Well, should I say piers? Because Ride Pier is in fact three piers, all built at separate points in history. Today we are talking about this one, which is now a walkway, but once, like many things, had a previous function. This is the story of the Ride Pier tramway. The tramway pier was built in 1864, alongside the already existing promenade, first constructed in as early as 1814. The locomotives and stock on the line varied over time. At the beginning though, after a brief trial with a steam locomotive, it was decided that horse-drawn trams were the way to go. This of course limited the risk of a fire on the pier, but in contrast restricted the speed and pulling power during the busy summer months. The company experimented with different horse-drawn trams until 1876, when they once again attempted to catch up with the times. That year, the company attempted to overcome its power deficit by hiring a steam-powered tram. It was found to be less than sufficient though, and the running in service lasted a mere three months. Gas-fired locomotives were also used on the railway before the dangers of such a chemical was fully understood. But once again, this venture came to nothing. And in 1884, the tramway reverted to horsepower. Finally, in 1886, the decision was taken to electrify the tramway, picking up power from the rails, much like the railway we now have on that pier. This was a vital move forward. In a leap, the line had gone from using outdated horse traction to being one of the first electric tramways in the whole world. In the late 1800s, though, electric traction was still very primitive. Nevertheless, the line remained powered by electricity until 1927, when the Southern Railway decided to abandon electric power in favour of petrol. In result of this, the Victorian style electric trams were replaced by more boxy and conventional looking Drury rail cars. The petrol power in these rail cars were later swapped out for diesel engines in 1958, presumably for safety reasons. Nevertheless, these little box-shaped machines shifted tourists and residents to and from the pier head for 42 years. Unfortunately, after a condemning inspection of the railway in 1968, the line closed for good in January 1969, 105 years after its opening. And that is the full story of the Ride Pier Tramway, but not quite because for a brief period of time, this line once extended far beyond the structure of the pier itself, inland for a good mile along the Esplanade to Ride St John's. But why? Well, to answer that question, we have to talk about the line on the other pier. The Isle of Wight Railway from Ride St John's to Shanklin was built much like the tramway in 1864. In fact, it was finished only six days earlier. There was an issue though, the rather large gap between the Esplanade and the terminus at St John's, a mile across town. Immediately, the tram company proposed a line to join the two points, but the town commissioners put their foot down firmly. In 1866, they had another go, but once again, the bill was turned down, this time seeking powers to build a locomotive hauled railway between the two locations. Ride Town Commissioners, though, were adamant that no noisy, smoky locomotives should ever be allowed to run north of Melville Street, at the time one of the most affluent places in Ride. Finally, in 1870, an application was authorised to build a tramway down the Esplanade to Cornwall Street, where it cut inland to St John's. Much of the route is still walkable to this day, following the Esplanade to a point where a short spur veered off to serve Victoria Pier, a structure built alongside the existing ones from a point which now lays behind the defunct ride ice rink. Further down, past Peter Pan's play park, the line curves sharply west of Cornwall Street, where it took a rather odd detour through a building. The building is still in situ to this day, although the void has gone, now rightly someone's living room. The line then ran down what is now the route of Merry Mead Close, where it joined and followed the flow of Moncton Mead Street. 
From just north of Rink Road down to St John's Station, the tramway followed the exact alignment of the railway that we still have to this day. This rather handy map diagram compares the courses of the two lines, with the 1871 tramway heading north from Rink Road to the Esplanade, and the later railway curving west before passing under the streets via tunnel. And this is where it terminated here at St John's Road, just north of where the road bridge is now, which of course wasn't there until the railway was extended in 1880. The tramway was then scaled all the way back to its previous form, running the length and only the length of the pier. Relics of the Rye Pier tramway do still exist, with the Isle of Wight Steam Railway preserving one of the Drury rail cars, which has recently been returned to service. They also have one of the original electric trams in their train story museum, which has been superbly restored. Amazingly, another tram car has also been preserved. Ride Pier Company No. 3, built in 1871, is the oldest surviving tram car in Britain and now resides at the Street Life Museum in Hull. And that is a short video on the history of the Ride Pier tram. We do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do like and subscribe and check out the other videos on the channel, including our disused railway series. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.